Hey folks, thought I'd give a little update on the F5. Got a few things done this week. I'm watching some of the old Discovery Channel Great Plains videos. A little uh, nostalgia from back when I was a kid. So uh, this week, I guess the big deal is I got the nose gear retract mounted. So I've got the, this is the stock Skymaster strut, which is a pretty cool looking F5 strut, not bad. Um, pretty simple setup I showed in an earlier video that I removed a ton of wood out of the front of the plane um, this whole box full of bulkheads and stuff uh, came out of here and saved probably about a half a pound of weight at least um, so I wanted to try to mount the gear without putting much of that back in I thought it was kind of overbuilt um, so what I've got is a pretty simple setup just, uh, it's what's really funny is I can't actually get the retract out of the airplane right now because I, I glued it in with the retract mounted to the wood and now the, uh, it fits so tight, the, the pins get stuck. So it'll either, I'll either file it out of there at some point or it'll live here forever. Uh, but anyways, uh, besides that the comic error, uh, just a couple of maple blocks that I've probably had sitting around for 25 years or something like that, probably from an old top flight kit. Um, and, uh, they're just, I cut a couple holes in this big bulkhead here and, uh, sized them for this. It's a ER120 JP Hobby. And as you can see on the front here, it's a 95 degree. So I get the 95 degree retracts because, um, I like for nose gears, I like to make sure that I like to have the, the retract close to the surface of the of the uh, the bottom of the plane so you have as short of a strut as possible but having that extra retract angle um, still allows me to put a little rake in the mounts and get either a vertical or in this case the the f5 actually has some forward rake on the strut so i've got a forward rake and then when i activate the gear it still gets that big two and a half inch tire all the way inside with some some room to spare so that's kind of the reason why I go for the 95 inch or 95 degree retracts. Um, that worked out really good on this one because I wanted to get that that forward rake. To me, the F5s don't look quite right without the forward rake on the gear, and it also helps with stability and creates a little natural caster there to the wheel because the contact patch is behind the center line. So that's that'll help the steering servo a little bit. Um, the steering servo I haven't installed. It's going to have the kind of usual JP setup. Will there be a there be a mount here? And I'm going to use I'm going to try this mount. I have a couple of these things. Um, this is the one I've used before, which is for like a mini servo. This is actually the one they sell for the for a micro servo, like a sub micro servo, like an HS65 size. I'm actually going to give this a shot. I think the F5 is not going to have. It doesn't have a trailing link strut. It puts a lot of torque on the servo. Um, so I just bought a real beefy Metal Gear high voltage sub micro servo. I'm going to give that a shot just to save weight and space. This will tuck inside uh, the model really nicely. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try that one out. Hopefully we won't be breaking servos. Um, I'll just flip this over real quick and show from the inside. Uh, you can see a little better what I was dealing with here. So it's still a pretty big beefy pretty beefy uh, bulkhead here and you can see the maple blocks and I'm actually going to cut these I'm going to cut these down I actually left these extra long sticking out the back because they helped me set the angle they would just rest on the bottom of the fuselage when I was gluing this in um, so I could put spacers under here to get the angle just right because it took a little finagling to get that all done so now that the high saw is all cured up in here I'll end up actually just just breaking these off uh, but I can wrench on this and I, it's pretty solid when I yank on these um, these maple beams here. I can see a little flex in the, the bulkhead here so I might end up, you know, it's, it's a bummer I, I didn't leave more of the material from just a like a half inch I-beam piece to make this like a T-beam from the original bulkhead that was here because it had carbon fiber on it and everything that this plate the gear used to mount to. But anyways, I can just add a doubler in here to, to kind of add on to this, what's left of the old plate where it came through and stiffen this up a little bit. Uh, Cause it's just that Skymaster plywood is just soft. So I'll, I'll strengthen that up a little bit, but we should still be down a major amount of weight from the stock setup. I mean, 
probably over half a pound. Just alone, the uh, <laughs> you can kind of see the, the size difference between the ER120 retract and the, the Robart that was in here originally. It's a, I mean, a massive nose gear. Uh, I mean, this thing looks like it's probably good up to like 50 pound planes. So this alone weighs twice as much as that, as this retract. So that's, that's a good weight savings as well. That's a big beefy nose gear. So if anyone needs a big beefy uh, Robart nose gear with steering, steering arm and all that, let me know because I don't have any use for that. So anyways, that's the, um, that's the big deal on the nose. Just getting the, that feels good to have the nose gear in there. That was kind of just bugging me on how, how I was going to do that. And then the other thing I got done this week was just, uh, I flanged the, it was driving me crazy that I didn't have a, a flange for the, uh, tail section. So I went ahead and laid up a flange on the back of the fuselage. So now the removable tail section can go on easily and have something to attach to. So, um, I just did the method. I didn't take really many pictures of it, but I just masked this off with masking tape and then, um, then I put packing tape on top of the masking tape because I found out that if you wax the masking tape, it just gets soggy. Um, so anyways, I did the packing tape inside and then I just uh, glued it, kind of tack glued it with sticks across the back here and tape. And then from the inside, I reached in and through the back here and, and through the nozzles and just laid this up with a piece of, I used some old, some old junky uh, fiberglass like wing joiner tape, the type that has the stitching on the end so it won't unravel. Um, don't ever use that stuff for layups. It's a real pain in the butt. It doesn't soak up the epoxy and it's really stiff. But I made it work and got that out of my flight box. It's been sitting there for, like I said, probably 20 years. So I still need to, the bottom, I, the, my fast uh, cure resin cured up too fast so I need to lay this up another layer on this is too flimsy um, and I'll probably put a couple pieces of wood here and there where the screws are going to go so that's done that's another thing that was bugging me um, what else did I do I think I've already mentioned this but the the horizontal mounts are all completely glued in now so everything on the uh, bearing the bearing holders bearing mounts all totally uh, I epoxy these in, they're all high salt in, and I did a little filling and sanding around the outside so they're they're blended into the fuselage and conformal, so those are all, all set. So the mounting of the elevators is pretty much ready for elevators. So I just need to finish uh fabricating some some new control horns, some tiller arms for those elevator shafts, and uh that's and then those will be ready to put servos in and mount. So I'm I'm moving slowly but surely, getting things done here. Um, I don't even know what I'm going to do next. I've kind of just been really random with this thing. Just I kind of just look for something on there that I want to get a, get solved, some problem I want to get solved, and then jump on that one, and then sometimes jump off and go to another thing. But anyways, I've got a little, plenty to do. I mean, all these, this is going to be gear doors, um, and it has a split gear door set up, so the the, there's a rear gear door that's all have driven just by a spring or something off the uh, off of the nose gear strut and then I'll have a main side opening hatch that'll close when the gear is down or when it's up um, so that'll just be a pretty that'll be a really easy um, door job the back one back here it shouldn't be too bad there's just not a lot of room for hinging to do some offset hinges inside so I'll probably have to make some kind of semi custom hinges or just try to hinge it off the back directly here I'll figure out a way to do it but um, so yeah plenty plenty to do and I still have work to do on the wing mounts I still have to actually put the, the screws in that hold the wing mounts in addition to being glued and some some backup blocks that I'm gonna high saw in to the wing mounts uh, yeah there's just there's plenty of things left to do here um, so I'll keep trucking but just want to give a little update We'll get her, we'll get her flying one of these days. Oh, there's the F20. That would be an awesome model as well. I'd still love to get a hold of an old Byron F20 kit and do it up really nice. All right, guys, we'll uh, we'll catch you later. Bye.